build opportunities, and it, that's definitely the same for plastic circularity. So thank you, Katerina. So our third speaker, uh, I'm going to welcome um, Rocky Pairunen. Okay, so Rocky, he is the manager of the National Plastics Action Partnership for Indonesia, and he will be talking to us about the challenges of small medium enterprises when it comes to accessing finance for plastic circularity. Let's welcome Rocky. Thank you, Pia. Um, good afternoon. Uh, selamat sore, Bapak Ibu. Um, uh, thank you very much for the opportunities given to uh, the NPAP Indonesia National Plastic Action Partnership. Um, uh, for you the, who doesn't know the NPAP, NPAP is a platform, multi-stakeholders, established in 2020 in Indonesia as part of global initiative of ac partnership on, action, uh, on, on plastics led by uh, World Economic Forum. So together with NPAP in Vietnam, we are the first NPAP established in Southeast Asia, and now uh, NPAP already um, exists at least uh, in Philippines, um, start to, um, in, in the development process, uh, Cambodia and Lao PDR, and we are happy to be part of NPAP family in the Southeast Asia. Um, in Indonesia, uh, the NPAP Secretariat is uh, under the World Resources Institute, an NGO focused on uh, sustainability uh, think tank, and we are guided uh, by Coordinating Ministry of Maritime Affairs and uh, Investment in Indonesia. So our work pretty much uh, relevant to supporting um, uh, uh, the government of Indonesia intention to address 70 or to achieve 70 percent uh, uh, plastic leakage to the ocean. So uh, today, uh, um, NPAP or, or me is actually assigned to share uh, about what can be uh, done to support small medium enterprise in accessing financing uh, for plastic circularity projects. When we are uh, assigned uh, for having this uh, opportunity, uh, I think uh, me and Pia discussed um, uh, NPAP first, we are not uh, association for SME, so basically, but, but we can uh, reach out SMEs as part of our communities because we have 106 communities uh, dif uh, that, that are quite diverse. Uh, we have uh, startups, um, uh, multinational companies, national company, um, government sectors, uh, development banks, and we are hoping in the future there will be more uh, uh, part of the inclusive community. So we can, we can reach out the information and as part of the NPAP secretariat, what is uh, one of the perks of, of being the secretariat is that we listen a lot. So we know uh, a lot of information, but we are not the expert on it uh, regarding the issue. So that's uh, pretty much the, 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 the summary of uh, benefit of, of, of uh, having be, be the Secretariat of NPAT. So yeah, um, wh what, what we are doing is actually um, we have, we, we conducted research, uh, small research upon uh, receiving this um, uh, the opportunity. So, um, we conducted research survey uh, involving um, uh, SMEs as part of our networks, as well as um, research analysis on uh, regulatory and then uh, uh, references uh, from Indonesia and Southeast Asia. So regarding the SME here, um, it's it's been it's been uh, they call it uh, known by all of us. It's a backbone for Southeast Asian countries. It's a backbone for uh, GDP, uh, employment, and of course also uh, contribute uh, significantly to the export market. Um, for Indonesia, for instance, SME is a very cr uh, uh, crucial element to be incorporated, that, that we has been incorporated in the national development planning uh, strategy. And for, the, for Thailand, as well as Malaysia, uh, SME's components uh, already also involved, included in, in their uh, document uh, development. And I, I believe also other countries within the region uh, play, uh, uh, takes SME as a, as a very strategic and very important uh, elements in the business sector. So when, when we are um, um, trying to focus to the circularity, um, we, we, we try to, we try to uh, put the perspective of climate in, in the sense of SME. 
So the research uh, that have been conducted by WRI Indonesia that is working on the sustainable business portfolio, um, SME is pretty much of, or, or really significant um, in the effort to shape for the decarbonization of industry because SME anyhow part of the supply chain of the bigger industry. So if there's any change in along along the supply chain for a decarbonization, which is also SME, then it will uh, uh, determine the attainment or the achievement of uh, the bigger industry, the ordained user in terms of decarbonization. Um, yeah, and then next slide. Uh, this basically uh, the the summary or let's say the, the analysis that we are doing in terms of um, EPR, no, uh, it's a, in terms of regulatory form, framework on circular economy. So we have ASEAN that basically provided um, voluntary guidelines. You can, uh, countries can follow if you don't, if you don't want to follow, if you don't want to follow, it's okay. But um, basically it provided guidance on how circularity, especially on plastics, can be um, can be adopted or can be uh, revert uh, in terms of development and national uh, circular, circular economy uh, strategy. And also uh, we outline uh, 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 the roadmap of waste reduction by producers in Indonesia where SME is included. So basically it's a, it's a EPR roadmap quote unquote, but then there is no, um, uh, how do you call it, there is, there, there is no distinguished uh, among the industry, so it applies for all. Um, however, in the implementation, uh, the first priority is the uh, uh, the big companies. SME is 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 the least priority, but it is not uh, stipulated in the law itself. While for Philippines, for the EPR Act, uh, I think uh, colleagues from Philippines can also uh, uh, feel free to feel free to uh, and you call it. Um, uh, revise if 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 the the analysis is 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 basically uh, not aligned with the existing situation, but then uh, what we what we capture from the from the document is that uh, SMEs at the moment is not in uh, is not in uh, is not required but encouraged. So basically, it's a m more like a voluntary participation in terms of uh, implementation of EPR uh, um, to promote circularity, while for Vietnam. Uh, SM, uh, some, SMEs, some SMEs are included, but then the focus is more, more on MNC or industries that have uh, annual turnover beyond uh, 30 uh, uh, billion uh, Vietnam dong. So this is basically um, the, the point where SMEs are included, but of course SMEs also have different challenges. If big companies in, part in, in circular economy have challenges in access financing, um, SMEs perhaps the, the challenge for SMEs perhaps double than it because they have to survive against the shocks from the markets from the external in fact even from, from their own uh, internal um, uh, uh, dynamics therefore it's it's perhaps the the how do you call it the the measure or the instrument to support SME would it be more progressive than uh, the bigger industry next slide Yeah, uh, this is actually uh, what I'm going to present is to, uh, about uh, the, the result of the survey. The survey is still uh, ongoing, so we haven't finished yet. Um, we conducted the survey, survey um, uh, through online with the SMEs, and now we are moving to the financing institution. We would also to see the perspective of financing institution based on the perspective of SMEs uh, in response to our questions. Next slide. So um, <clears throat> when we when we uh, when we decided to or when we designed the the, the survey, we we uh, sort of like um, contemplate basically um, uh, how to distinguish SME working in the in the, in the plastic circularity. So um, we we look many references and then we found uh, thanks to UNEP that uh, UNEP categorizes. Uh, two um, types of uh, industry uh, uh, in the area of circularity, not necessarily uh, 
uh, plastic. Uh, the first one is green innovators. So basically, it's uh, it's the industry that providing service or providing uh, goods that um, uh, have transformational impacts. And the second one is green performance. So basically, green performance is the, like conventional SME. It could be um, a restaurant or it could be cafe. But then the, it they would like to have the, they would like to transition towards uh, uh, a green uh, uh, awareness, therefore enhance their competitiveness. So um, from uh, from these two categories, what we receive in terms of a result uh, or feedback is we receive 24 uh, SMEs from the green innovators. So basically, they are innovators part of network of NPAP Indonesia and nine green performers. Performer. So basically, the, the SMEs that utilizing um, the surface of inno uh, innovation or innovators. Next slide. Yeah, the green innovators. The result is. Yeah, in summary, what what we found is that uh, in terms of accessing financing, green innov green innovators faces significant challenge in access finance due to the lack of in investor interest. So access financing, it's, it, yeah, it's, it is a problem, but basically the underlying problem is, uh, according to the green innovators, lack of investor interest and un unclear regulatory framework. In, 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 in the sense that um, if you see the, the, the percentage here or the, the proportion, access to financing opportunities, 75%, meaning that the 24, uh, 75 of, of them filling up the access to financing is is uh, is the is, is it challenging, but they also uh, see they also have different cha other challenges, which might also uh, contribute to the access to financing. That's why lack for lack of in investor interest here. Basically, the investor uh, is not interested at all in terms of their business model, um, the markets, and that not really uh, profitable. Um, uh, and then the yeah, basically uh, circularity is is a new thing for several several uh, or maybe majority of the of the investor, especially for the SME and unclear like, regulatory framework. This is uh, mostly uh, in relation to the enabling condition for the markets because um, for the SME in the area of plastic plastic circularity, I think they 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 are not only facing um, or working in the area of business but they have to change the they change the the um, the current trend the the market the market demand the current trend is that mostly uh, people mostly consumers look for uh, more convenience con convenience that is offered by let's say startup or industry for instance like online Online taxi, it, it offers it offers convenience, and then you have um, reuse refill that that allows you to bring your own bottle. It's a backtrack, it's a back backtrack uh, business model, and then you then you have to deal with the supply chain and so on. So basically, um, it the 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 works for the industry in in, in circularity is heavier than other types of uh, startup. That offers convenience for the customers, and and then that's actually uh, uh, very challenging in the sense of um, um, uh, expanding a market, and therefore it can therefore can access the the, the finance. Um, next slide, yes, it's actually the the comments uh, the comments com we receive from the 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 industry from the startup. I think. Uh, we can skip this one. Next slide. Um, well, in terms of uh, uh, green innovator, we refer to the uh, studies conducted by GIZ, uh, barriers to invest in circular economy, uh, basically the market uncertainty and insufficient regulatory environment. Uh, the, 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 the big two is actually the enabling conditions that uh, that needs to be uh, in uh, in place in order to be able for SMEs to receive uh, uh, or to access financing. So access financing, it's it's is not yes it's 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 needed, but there is an underlying issue that needs to be uh, addressed. Therefore, uh, uh, SME can access the financing. Next slide. 
And then we next to the grid performance, the, the ninth uh, uh, industry that we um, uh, surveyed. Um, the green performance, uh, the motive of the green performance is wh what we receive is that why they would like to transition towards the circularity is uh, they just have this uh, moral virtue to uh, create positive environmental impact and minimizing cost. So basically it's a, it's a, it's a value, moral value that that uh, driven them, and then uh, economic value uh, that uh, um, that hopefully uh, can reduce the cost. Therefore, they can um, basically um, uh, 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 create more profit. Um, the area that of plastic security integration that the area of industry that we uh, receive mo uh, most uh, response is basically from product design, basically redesigning, reuse. Re uh, uh, in this context, uh, reuse and refill uh, industry. And then the second one is uh, waste management uh, collection actor and then consumer engagement. So uh, this this, ac uh, this actually the, the, the response we receive uh, in terms of what, what drives them and the uh, areas where they are working. And next slide. Yeah. Um, for the green performance, um, they find financial financ financial still, of course, the issue, uh, uh, but then not necessarily access to financing. It's a it, it, it's a financial in the in the broader uh, context and uh, supply chain. Supply chain here could be also could also be uh, the uh, accessing for the raw materials, um, uh, as well as the business model that requires. Uh, robust supply chain business model and technological constraints so in so finance is not is not the only uh, the only um, how do you call it things that um, that are required by SME in in, in, in order to grow their industry um, and even uh, if from the survey we, we receive that the numbers of um, uh, uh, Funding or financial uh, access compared to supply chain, supply chain and technical constraints is, is equal. So basically, it's um, it's it's something that um, uh, financial might be something happen or, or or exist because the other two. So not ne not necessarily the other the other way around. So research, deeper research, deeper deeper uh, discussion on uh, we, uh, in this context is, is really needed. Um, hopefully we can we can um, um, complete our our research within uh, within uh, within this month or, or maybe within next month uh, to get more insight what's actually uh, the un underlying issues on on this. Next slide. So uh, from the from the survey and then uh, what we have discussed so far with, with the SMEs uh, as part of the survey, we again uh, for the green innovators, um, the interest from, from their perspective, the interest from uh, um, uh, uh, investor and uncle un unclear regulatory framework still are the major two issues. Um, uh, but then they believe um, comprehensive enabling conditions from uh, a regulatory framework and hopefully they, it can also be addressed by uh, uh, the PBL, for instance, uh, can help uh, the industry to grow. And of course, uh, this, uh, um, of course this, this, this require a, a deeper study in, in terms of understanding the, the, the details. And for green performance, integrating plastic circularity primarily to achieve positive environmental impacts. It's uh, basically the, the moral value that we have, we still need to preserve, uh, and then we should not allow, allow uh, this um, industry turn to be more pragmatic just because, um, well, we have, to, we have to survive. Therefore, we have to um, change our business to the, to the um, basically, uh, to the brown industry or to the gray industry anymore again. And then, uh, Okay, thank you. And then capacity building um, to to the uh, uh, SMEs. That is not necessary. The SMEs itself uh, as, as a target. It could be the value chain uh, that is supporting the uh, the, the industry that that um, saying that access to financing is needed. Somehow the issue is not necessary 
relies on the industry that, that we that we 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 survey or we we um, um, interview. The the challenge might be happen might might exist in the SMEs or in the industry uh, along the value chain that supports the 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 the, the industri the main industry. So this is actually that we need to um, unlock or the information we need to unlock, and hopefully we can uh, share more later um, on on the result. So I think that's all from our side. Thank you very much uh, for the attention and looking forward for discussion. Thank you, Rocky, for this presentation. And uh, I really appreciate you doing uh, new research for this presentation, doing some survey work. It's always a challenge to get uh, the opinion and perceptions of uh, SMEs who uh, operate in different places. So I want to uh, do a group Q&A discussion. So I'd like to welcome uh, back to this uh, stage uh, Regula, uh, Katerina, and Rocky um, so that our audience can uh, ask their questions uh, at, to the group. So please, uh, Rocky, uh, Katerina, and Regia, please come and sit up in the front. So we have time for questions uh, both uh, here in the room and online. So uh, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask our uh, esteemed speakers regarding gender, SMEs, private capital? Yeah, thank you. And just to break the ice with a slightly sort of different question. Um, I was looking, and maybe from your experience, if you can share, um, with waste, and we have this issue of waste mafias. I don't know if you've come across this, people defending waste as their own turf. Um, perhaps this is, Naples could be an example of the real mafia. Um, in this context of access to finance, have you had issues with sort of these types of people that are accessing finance while sort of trying to cover their waste turf? You know, because, uh, and also from a gender perspective, um, anything like that? Um, it's, it's slightly off the, the regular questions. So I just thought I'd put it out there, thanks. Yes, I'm, I must say I don't have any experience on that, actually. I don't know if my panelists would like to add anything. I mean, the, uh, the uh, collection sector um, is quite uh, complex. There are many actors in the industry, uh, small and mid-sized aggregators, and I don't know if Diane is still in the room. She may better answer this question as she's actually on the ground working with collection. Um, we invest in businesses often um, in, you know, so let me step back. So I think re the aspect of responsible supply chain in, in the sur plastic circularity is absolutely critical. And what that means is when we invest in businesses, we make, whether it is a recycling business or someone upstream who collects, that we make sure as part of our due diligence we fully understand and ensure that all the human rights aspects are properly taken care of and invest only in businesses which, which, which these values are very critical. So in that sense, you know, assessing the entire supply chain and particularly in, 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 in the upstream collection uh, business is critical to understand are, um, are they getting the, the minimum salaries um, you know, or do they have, uh, are there no human rights violations? Um, we can trace uh, the sector through um, digital platforms where, you know, the money flow is tr it can be traced. Uh, there it, in, in, in the industry in, in particular, also there, there are platforms who make sure that there is no cash payment, right? That it is all digital, that there's fair payment, there's, human, there's no human rights violations. And so when we do businesses, we properly assess 
the partners we're entering into business with to, um, to make sure that we have the same values in, in ethical standards and how we do business and that we're aligned. So yes, it is, a, it is an industry generally which uh, has many players, but, but obviously we make sure that with whom we interact um, that, that they live up to the, the jointly uh, um, the, the standards we jointly define. But maybe uh, you know those in the room who work on the ground may answer that question more appropriately. But when you did your research, did you come across that? I mean, yeah. Um, not not specifically across the, the questions, but um, um, during the discussion in our and Bob series of events, discussion with, with colleagues that um, this waste mafia exists uh, because um, lacking of social protections to the informal sectors. Um, if the informal sectors, the waste picker family is sick, they cannot afford uh, hospitals. They go, they go to the they go to the landlord, <laughs> waste lord, I would say, to to pay or front the 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 health uh, uh, allowance, for instance, which actually it has to be repaid. Uh, it has to be repaid later by the collectors. Um, I think um, uh, uh, there are basic necessities that that is not yet. Uh, as part of public service that is not yet, um, how do you call it, uh, felt or benefited by by, by the internal sector. By the informal sectors, therefore, um, uh, this um, kind of, uh, how do you call it, patrons, <laughs> kind of patrons exist. And Eliminating patterns as well is 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 um, how do you call it? Is tricky because at some point uh, the waste speaker sees them as the as a hero because when they are in need of financial support, they are the place to go. They cannot go to the bank to uh, lend money. Um, this is actually uh, something that needs to be addressed along the value chain as well. If if uh, in the future uh, um, uh, we would like to uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, come up with with more. Um, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, human rights uh, uh, context. Maybe to add, I was formerly working in the microfinance industry and obviously there you have loan sharks, right? And, and you mentioned that. I think what is, it does exist absolutely, right? But what is critical is that we, we, we formalize this industry. And, and by formalizing means exactly that, that you start making sure that, that the, the ultimate waste worker um, has its right that they're fairly paid, that a lot of, that the transactions are, are digital, right, is a way to do it, that you have traceability and transparency along the entire supply chain to ensure that these violations are not happening. And that's that I think that's the way the industry has to go. We have to formalize the, in that sense the currently informal structure of the industry um, to prevent all of these mismanagements and, and uh, um, which happens obviously and have been happening. And, and, and I think what is important and, and uh, when you, particularly for a lot of the recyclers, so they, those who get the material in the bottles and the flakes, they themselves more and more build their own collection businesses which are adjacent to their supply chain. Meaning, it is ultimately what we heard from Diane, those who have access to the feedstock have the power because the feedstock is most critical. And if you vertically integrate and build your own collection efforts, you, have, you can ensure that everything along the step is traceable. Plastic is traceable, the money is traceable, you can ensure fair pricing and no human rights violations. Great, no thank you for those insights and the question. Um, I see we have one more question from uh, Dr. Panade. Um. Uh, thank you, actually uh, I, I will start with maybe observation because uh, Rocky, I think I, I can confirm you that, uh, I, and I like that you differentiate between like green innovator and green performer. I have some experience with like the green uh, performer in the tourism industry, and it seems like, like 
the availability and accessibility to like supply is kind of the big uh, bottleneck for them to, 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 to kind of change. So I can confirm that. And uh, maybe uh, I, I know that you use like online survey. I, I saw in your LinkedIn. Maybe that 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 quite difficult to catch these people. That's why the 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 end for you is quite small for this sector. But uh, yeah, I think we have like 20 uh, uh, enterprise that we uh, survey in the north, and I can confirm on that. And I think because the lock-in effect, I mean, they already in the existing supply chain, and when they, they change it, sometimes it's not the price, but it like the availability. So I can confirm on that. And for the question, uh, actually, I would like to add on to. Uh, what we are just discussing about digitized uh, the payment uh, and I maybe would like to ask on uh, with, uh, the panelists and also uh, people in, in this room has there been any experience on how to uh, build the capacity when we talk about the uh, informal sector and we have a lot of women uh, I had one project with Coca-Cola Foundation in we try to help the junk shop in the east on the island, the small one. And we try to make the payment for the shipping cost. We kind of reimburse them and trying to introduce some IT solution. But it turned out that it's quite difficult because some of them, I mean, their mobile phone is too out there that, you know, so on and so forth. Some of them are illiterate. So any kind of uh, tip or recommendation or have you ever kind of overcome this, this, this issue? Okay, thank you. Um, I would say um, here, and, the, and the actually the Indonesian participants can probably add, I would say uh, there is a very <laughs> large use of, um, There is a very large use of uh, uh, e-wallets here in Indonesia that fundamentally uh, it, they, they are almost to the point where they can be used as a substitute to a bank account for, for any regular purpose, except that the KYC requirements are so much easier. And so in the formal sector, fundamentally, all these waste apps here, at least in Jakarta, in the main areas, that's what they're using. and. Um, and apparently that's what they've been able to do to, to just get the informal sector on board with apparently no real issue. Yeah, I mean, we have seen these uh, um, apps and, and uh, platforms out there in the South and Southeast Asia, and my colleague Umesh just next to, um, through our sister entity can share with you some of the experiences out there. But they are there, they're available, and they function actually. Whether they're fully integrated or not, we've seen points you can gain and redeem them for insurance or food or anything, but also, you know, like really full digital payments to your bank account. And here again, if, if, if the, the business, the company works with the, 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 the collectors, the waste workers, to open the bank accounts, to have everything transferred, you can really make this, these individuals bankable, where in the past they have not been. And I think we're in a, in a DNA, in an age here where there is no reason why no someone should not have a bank account. It doesn't matter how much or how little money you make. Um, I think that should be just, that that's, that, that's something we, we, which is doable. And we've seen that in the, micro, in the microfinance industry and in, in this industry as well. So happy to share more of the examples and the businesses we looked at and some of them also invested. All right, thank you for that. So uh, unfortunately, we can't do any more questions, but thank you for your presentations and thank you for uh, answering the questions from our participants in the room. So let's give a round of applause for uh, Regula, Rocky, and Katerina. So um, we've, we've been in here for a while, so let's go take a 15-minute coffee break outside. I see there are brownies out there, uh, so I'm very excited. 